Once upon a time, there was a vast and powerful empire called the Seleucid Empire, it existed between 312 and 63 BCE and was the largest among the Hellenistic states that emerged after the conquests of Alexander the Great. The empire was founded by Seleucus I, one of Alexander's generals, who took the title Nicator, meaning victor. Seleucus proved to be the most successful warrior among the Diadochi, the successors of Alexander, during the long and bloody wars. The Seleucid Empire stretched from the Middle East and Asia Minor all the way to Bactria in Central Asia. Initially, Seleucus also claimed parts of India, but he had to relinquish them to Chandragupta II around 305 BCE. Sadly, Seleucus was later killed by Ptolemy Karaunos, a member of the ruling Egyptian dynasty. The Seleucid dynasty combined both Greek Macedonian and Near Eastern traditions of rule. Although the Seleucid monarch was theoretically not identified with any particular people, they adopted Greek culture and practice. Greeks and Macedonians made up the majority of the kingdom's governing elite, known as the king's friends. The Seleucids also claimed a strong connection with the Greek god Apollo, while also patronizing the traditional religion of Babylon and presenting themselves as rulers in the Mesopotamian and Persian traditions. Like other Hellenistic rulers, they even claimed to possess divine qualities. The original capital of the empire was Seleucia on the Tigris, but eventually, it settled at Antioch in Syria. Due to its vast size, complete centralization was impossible, taking inspiration from the Persian Achaemenid tradition. The early Seleucids divided their empire into large administrative districts called satrapies, mostly assigned to members of the royal family. However, the empire faced numerous challenges on its frontiers, making it difficult for Seleucid kings to maintain consistent foreign and military policies. Over time, the Seleucids lost much of their direct control over Iran and Bactria. A new Greek kingdom emerged in Bactria, while Iran fell to the Parthians. Antiochus III, also known as Antiochus the Great, temporarily reasserted Seleucid control in the late 3rd century BCE. However, his success was short-lived. In Asia Minor, the Seleucids lost territories to invading Gauls and faced secession, which led to the establishment of the independent Hellenistic Kingdom of Pergamum, a perpetual rival. The Egyptian Ptolemies also challenged Seleucid leadership in the Hellenistic Middle East. Antiochus managed to expel the Ptolemies from Palestine and Phoenicia after the Battle of the Panium in 200 BCE. However, their most formidable rival was the rising power of the Mediterranean, the Roman Republic. Antiochus clashed with the Romans when he attempted to expand into Asia Minor and Greece. After suffering two defeats, Antiochus agreed to the Peace of Apamea in 188 BCE, which resulted in his withdrawal from Europe and Western Asia Minor, and the disbanding of his navy and elephant force. Following Antiochus, the Seleucid Empire found itself caught between the Romans in the west and the Parthians in the east. It also faced a significant internal challenge from the population of Judea. Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a strong promoter of Hellenic culture and his own royal cult, faced a revolt by the Jews led by the Maccabees. Eventually, the Jews established an independent kingdom in Judea. Antiochus IV also faced a humiliating withdrawal from Egypt, a Seleucid satellite, when the Roman Senate demanded it without even sending an army. After Antiochus, the Seleucid Empire struggled to maintain its power in the east. The empire faced defeats and internal turmoil between the descendants of Antiochus IV and his brother, Seleucus IV Philopodor. Mithridates I of Parthia captured Babylon in 142 BCE and took Seleucid ruler Demetrius II Nicator captive in 138 BCE. Although there was a partial recovery under Demetrius' brother, Antiochus VII, who advanced deep into Parthian territory, he was ultimately killed in battle in 129 BCE. The wife of both Demetrius and Antiochus, Cleopatra Thea, from the Ptolemaic family, was the only Seleucid woman to rule under her own authority. However, Seleucid power continued to dwindle until it was reduced to Syria. The last Seleucids engaged in bitter infighting, and the Roman general Pompey finally turned Syria into a Roman province in 64 BCE. The last Seleucid ruler, Antiochus XIII Asiaticus, was murdered shortly thereafter. And so, the Grand Empire of the Seleucids came to an end.